right, welcome back uh, from the last tutorial, which was, I believe, about basic layouts and controls. Now, in this tutorial, we're going to learn more about controls, and we are going to learn about the most common controls that are being used in applications like list, and combo box, and checkbox, and radio button, and stuff like that. But we are not going to be worrying more about radio buttons and stuff because they are easy. Because if you want to check if a radio button is selected, you say that uh, radio button dot is selected. So, um, for instance, let's just do a quick example. What you're going to do here is I'm just going to drag a radio button here. And oh, oh my god, I'm just going to drag a radio button here. I'm going to drag another radio button. And I'm just going to say, and I'm just going to have a uh, button dragged which is this one actually and this button is just going to tell which one of the radio button is selected so uh, I'm just going to 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 interpret with the event with the click event of the button you would um, double click the button or you go into events which is here and you can uh, change this to this one but a J button one action performed action perform method is basically the click method of the button however the action perform method would vary depending on the control that you're using for instance if the I mean uh, different controls of different action performance methods but for button it's click so I'm just gonna double click it for now and it's gonna take me straight to oh wow it's was supposed to take me oh yeah it is okay so here I can change the I put the code which I want to execute when the button is double clicked. So in here I can put something like, uh, well, something like uh, it would basically is going to check well, if the radio button one has been selected or if radio button two has been selected. So well, I'm just going to create a string variable, string uh, uh, selection text string okay uh, if uh, j radio one dot is selected then I'm gonna add radio one one uh, and then just gonna check again two dot is selected Selection string plus equals. Okay, so what it's going to do is it's going to say that if radio button one is selected, then it's going to append radio button one selection string. If second is selected, then it's going to append second to the string. And then it's going to display show message dialog this uh, because this is a GUI class, so we want the uh, message box to be attached to the GUI class and the message text which is going to be selection string done now I'm just going to run this and what we're going to do is going to select this one I'm going to click this it's going to say radio button one and then I want to say but look at it but, but look here now both of the radio buttons have been selected instead of just one now this is a major problem because I, I want um, I'm supposing I want this one to be male and this one to be female in a form and if you do this then a uh, user can select male and female which is incorrect <laughs> so to to do that I have to group these two radio buttons so, so uh, Java has a control for it which is called button group and it can group things so uh, the button group is here you can't see it on the, in the form because it's a it's a logical thing so you go into properties and in the properties it has a property called button group and you select the button group that you want and now if I run the program you should allow me to select only one of the two as you see it is it so it's radio button one radio button two radio button one so well uh, this is how a radio button works which is going to clear these controls of the form and the, our next control for learning is the list list is very important because list is widely used in forms and stuff lists are incredibly useful they can do stuff that uh, no other control can <laughs> yeah, well uh, i don't know it's just easy 
However, I th I would rather prefer to use a combo box instead of a list. And in my majority of the programs, I use combo boxes and not lists because I'm a bit allergic to them because they they take too much of the space and and that's just not fair. <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to drag a text field here. So I'm just going to allow a user to enter a value of his choice. And depending on what the user has entered, I'm going to enter the value into the list box. To do that, well, adding items to the list is not as easy as you, as you would anticipate. However, uh, this method should allow you to make your method of adding thing easy. Okay, to add something to the list box, you can't just add it directly. You need to create a list model. A list model would work like it would. Uh, you pass this string. Uh, you can't pass actually. A list model is an abstract class. I mean, you, we are going to use an abstract list model, which is an abstract class, and the abstract list model would allow me to have uh, a string array. So I'm just going to say list model. I'm just going to define a list model first. Lm equals new. You can call it anything. I I I, I call lm. You can call it anything. Barbie or something new abstract list model and and it gives me this code I mean you you would be probably be wondering what this code is but this is just a an abstract class then and, and, and like these methods that you have to implement and uh, well let's just do not go into this far let's just continue doing the work okay what we're gonna do here is we're gonna uh, define a a, a um okay we are going to create a global array list so uh, an array list of type string of course list it calls new array list okay so now i have an array list and an import as well so just going to list now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add the value inside the text field to the list array list so list dot add uh, test j text field one dot get text and notice so now I've got text uh, so I've added one value to the list and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say um, uh, I'm just going to say something like uh, array list This two equals list, and um, to to get the size, you should return the size of the list two, which is list two dot uh, length the size. Sorry, yeah. And in this get element as all. Well. So how would you get an element at a specific point? Well, to do that, you say return list two dot get and index that's it so now list two is uh, well to avoid burden you might want to do just list and you you might not even want to do this but but I prefer to uh, uh, what you call localize everything and that would just take off the burden of everything okay so we have created a list model now and what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this list model to the model of the current list so list j uh, j li, uh, list one dot set model lm i don't know what this why this happens set model lm it's been set now so now i can run the program and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do this so now it's got text for one which is the text of this it's going to say uh, happy and add so now it has happy mj text field now i'm just going to say something like uh l i l uh, i don't know i've lost my imagination okay so that's what we that's how we add values to the uh, j list to remove values from j list what we're going to do is we're going to drag another button and basically you would type in okay instead of doing that let's bring our old uh where is it, where is it? Where is it? spinner Old spinner, okay. Good old spinner. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, allow the user to enter the index here, and 
in this in this thing, this is going to do is uh, that j, uh, j list one dot remove remove at uh, remove here, and this is going to say it's j spinner dot get value. Our last problem int uh, uh, index it calls get value okay I'm just gonna have index here. okay so I'm run this here and if you say I want to remove our one zero one if I oh shit Okay, array index out of bounds. Uh, well, this is preposterous. Okay, let's just do let's add this JTX field and let's do this and it should do zero one two. Okay, we'll get back to this later in my next tutorial. Probably I'm having some issues with the. Uh, the um, method accessing techniques or something. Oh, hold on! I've got another idea. List j list one dot get model dot uh, remove. Okay, uh, dot to get size get thing. Okay, so you can't remove it. Okay, we'll come back to this later. For now, we're gonna focus on the combo box control, which is my favorite. And we're just gonna drag down and drag a combo box here. And the combo box allows you to display all the values that a list can, in addition to having uh, certain things. I mean, you can add the item directly to a combo box, you can you can take it off directly. It's just very nice, I like it. So we're just gonna drag a text field now, which is gonna allow me to enter values inside it and I was going to drag a button which would add the values inside the text field. Okay, so basically the way it works is JCOM box 1 would contain all the values and the J text field 2 and J button 3 would determine what, what values to add. So let's get started. Okay, so double click on the J combo box J button 3 and it would present us with the J button 3 action perform method and it's going to say J spinner J combo box one dot add item look at this this is the best thing I like about this you can just add item directly instead of creating a model and adding item through the model and then adding it you can just add an item directly and so j text field two dot get text okay so now we are adding the id text of the j text field two it's going to run the program now and we are going to uh, so the text is JTX field 2 now, so I'm just going to click this and it should have JTX field 2. Oh, yeah, hey! And we're going to add something else here uh, orange, something, J3, and look at this, we've got orange now. So, this is why I love this control. JCOM box 1 dot remove at, I should be have removed. Remove, uh, remove uh, 0. So, we're going to remove 1 every time. J one, two, three, four. Hmm, it's not working here as well. I think there's some problem with this. We'll solve it later. I'll solve it later. I'll let you know in the next tutorial about this about this problem and we're gonna solve it together. Don't worry. Now our next control is the progress bar. Yeah, uh, the progress bar is easy. You just say progress bar dot set value and you set the value to the progress bar. The text pane is like basically it's like uh no, I'm sorry text area text area is basically like a text box with multiple lines it's like a text field having more than one line so it's just easy slider would allow you to slide through and it would allow you to set value so you can say slider dot set value get value to get the value of the slider at a point you can set um, a minimum value maximum value and another important thing for spinner you can set what minimum value you want what your maximum value is and what your step size is. Step size is basically 
uh, the value that is incremented or decremented each time you click these arrow buttons. Just do that, you have to locate the modal property, the J spinner, and you select the dot 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 button. And in the model type, you say, I want, it, I want it to be a number. And if you want to increment it in points, like point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, set the step size to point 0.1. However, you need to first set the number type to double. And initial value sh should be zero. I mean, I want zero. Uh, you get that, um, I mean, the minimum value to be minus 200 or something like that. Maximum value to be hmm, 10,000. But if you don't want maximum value, it's fine. You can just uncheck it. The step size, if you want it to be 0 0.01, it's fine because it's a double value and you can do any, anything you want with it. So once we set this to OK and once we run the program, if you notice, it would increment, uh, say, um, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, blah, 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 blah. And it's, in, it's incrementing it. OK, so the um, minimum value is 200 minus 200. Let's try minus 300 it is replaced see the, the, this is the main uh, main um, benefit of this control so you can say 7.3 and it will take it you can say 7.32 it would take it 7.8 I mean it would take any value that's the main beauty of this control another beauty of this control is if you, if you try to enter text and if you if and if you uh, change focus it's going to replace the text with the previous with the last enter value that is why I love this control. And I use this control in many of my courseworks and it rocked. Yeah, so basically, that's how the um, basic controls work in Java. Another main control is the checkbox, but uh, as you know, we did the J, J radio button and checkbox is very much similar to it. Check, checkbox is basically like, you can say checkbox stop is selected properly to access if the checkbox is selected or not. And toggle button is very much similar to checkbox, and uh, in uh, and the main difference is it's a toggle button. It's it's like a toggle button. It's not just a button. I mean, it's like a button. But uh, okay, let's just see it. Shift F6, and you can toggle the button on and off, which is really helpful because you can basically tell by looking at it that this option has been selected and that has not. So yeah, and you can just access the toggle button dot is selected property to say if the toggle button has been selected or not. And that's that's probably it for now in this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we are gonna exploit these container things, and we are gonna try to make our uh, our thingy. What you call it? <laughs> uh, our uh, GUI skills more more. Uh, we are going to make our graphical user interface skills more powerful by exploring these controls, by, by mainly exploring the panel and tap pane. Tap pane is my personal favorite. And we are not going to go through by these ones because these ones are really complex. I mean, they're not complex actually, but they are tiring and uh, they are not much used. And they, that one is, but I mean, these ones are just ridiculous. So, well, for th that is for now. We I will see you in the next tutorial. Till then, practice the GUI controls and make sure you get them right. And in the next tutorial, I'm gonna find out what the error was with the list box. Till then, all right, guys, see you later. Bye bye. Enjoy your day and enjoy the graphical user interface th um, thingy with that means. Bye bye.